Welcome to ClubhouseNews.com. You're tuned into Clubhouse News Weekend for the week ending Saturday, March 15th. I'm Gabriella. And I'm Jesse. It's time to bust out the party hats and streamers because the World Wide Web is turning 25. While the internet has only been around for 25 years, it has managed to impact just about every aspect of our lives. Just think, without the web, you wouldn't be watching us right now. <laughs> The idea for the web came from a European computer scientist, Tim Berners-Lee, who wrote a scientific paper detailing how the World Wide Web could link computers around the world with a simple mouse click. Believe it or not, people thought it was a silly idea at the time. Boy, were they wrong. Look at that. Blows my mind every time. Right. And print. The early world of the internet was just a bunch of complicated codes that no one could understand. Huh? When Berners-Lee turned it into the World Wide Web, those codes remained to the fun browser we know and use today. Whoa, maps and readouts. That's the computer screen. It's a database of some kind. Last summer, Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook, announced a project called Internet.org. He's joining with several other tech giants to bring the internet access all around the world using satellite drones. These satellite drones are solar powered and can bring internet to places that have never had it before, like Africa. While the internet is a great thing, how much is too much? From the NSA spying on our emails to people being able to turn on your webcam, what can be done to protect ourselves from spying eyes? We mentioned last week that South by Southwest is one of the biggest festival conferences around, and one leg of the show is dedicated to high-tech gadgets, presentations, and guest speakers. Snowden, the NSA whistleblower, appeared via satellite and had a lot to say about privacy. He warned that Americans need to be equipped with tools to protect them from surveillance. They're the folks who can really fix things, who can enforce our rights through technical standards. Just remember that the internet is available to everyone, and anything you post out there is permanent. Anyone can see it. So think before you post things. Oh, no. One year ago, the Catholic Church elected a new pope to lead the nearly 1.2 billion Catholics around the world. Former nightclub bouncer Jorge Mario Bergoglio. After taking on the name Pope Francis, after one of the most beloved saints, St. Francis of Assisi, he has really managed to bring the church into the 21st century. He couldn't be more humble by cooking his own food, traveling by bus, and refusing the Pope treatment. Pope Francis, who is truly a man of the people, has managed to reach out to the poor and provide comfort to the sick like no Pope has ever done before. Congrats, Pope Francis! As we reported last week, until the early 1990s, the United Soviet Socialist Republics, or the USSR, was the USA's only real rival as a world superpower, consisting of Russia and 14 bordering socialist states, including Ukraine. The Soviet Union and its communist government wanted to rule the world. And I will rule the world! All hail Biden! Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to rebuild his country into a global superpower. Well, victory is mine! Despite their best attempts, so far the USA and Europe's diplomatic efforts have failed. Meeting after meeting, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has gotten the runaround. Ukraine's territorial integrity must be restored and must be respected. Regardless of what happens with the vote, Putin has put the free countries of the world on defense. If he's successful in Crimea, then Ukraine, Putin could become overconfident and start believing that no one can stop him from rebuilding the Russian Empire, with him as a supreme leader. <laughs> and to anyone who's ever seen the Star Wars films, think of Putin as Emperor Palpatine, aka Darth Sidious, the Sith Lord who wants to rule the universe. And as my first act with this new authority, I will create a grand army of the Republic. You claim to fight for freedom, but you really want to crush it. Luke Skywalker, are you out there? Use the force, Luke. Hi, I'm Joey with this week's Science and Tech News. Have you ever wondered how our universe was created? Well, you may soon find out. A group of researchers from 19 different countries have teamed up in order to watch the birth of the planets and the stars. If this sounds impossible, it's because it was. 
Until now, the ALMA, aka Atacama Large Millimeter Array, is a super telescope. Along with this telescope, they have 66 antennas spread out over a plateau in Chile. A plateau is basically a mountain with a flat top, and they chose this mountain because it's so tall that the air up there is really thin. So what makes this telescope different? Most telescopes can see optical or visual pictures, but this one can see radio wavelengths. When these antennas collect data, it is sent to Almost Supercomputer, which is about as powerful as 3 million laptops. The data is then looked at by researchers to see the universe like never before. There's still a lot more research to be done using ALMA, and I'm sure that whatever scientists find next will be out of this world. Almost two weeks ago, researchers stumbled upon a Martian meteorite that had strong evidence for life on Mars. Scientists don't want to wait around and rely on sheer luck to obtain another rock from the red planet, so NASA wants to team up with the private rocket company SpaceX, owned by Elon Musk, you know, the guy behind Tesla cars, to send a spacecraft to Mars. Two, one, zero, and liftoff. In their cost-effective plan, NASA wants to use what they call the Red Dragon. It's a specialized version of SpaceX's cargo craft designed to take equipment and people to their destination. In this case, the destination would be none other than the barren surface of the Red Planet. The reason NASA wants this craft in particular is because it can carry more than six tons of weight. Whoa! This would allow researchers to send a heavy-duty drill to dig down about 6.5 feet into the Martian surface and collect samples. Besides collecting samples, however, the trip would also test a landing technique to send humans to Mars sometime in the future. When you think about people not having enough water, it seems crazy, right? After all, the Earth is 70% water. Already it's half empty! Hmm, I'd say it's half full. Stop that! Of that 70%, 95% of it is ocean water that we can't drink. In fact, only about 2.5% of the water is fresh water that we can drink. Then to make matters worse, we can't access a lot of that fresh water because it's contained in icebergs and glaciers and snow fields. So if you do the math, that only leaves 0.007% of all water in the world to hydrate 6.8 billion people. What? Which brings us to the Arctic Harvester. It's a donut-shaped facility that is designed to collect small icebergs off the coast of Greenland. When the large chunks of frozen water break off and melt, the water will nourish plants growing in the Arctic Harvester. The fruits and veggies that can be harvested and eaten by local people. Although the designers want to see the Arctic Harvester in action, they'd better act fast. The polar ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. And that means that any water they could have collected is melting into the ocean and becoming salt water. Can you imagine a future where everything from body organs to toys can be printed from a magical machine? Well, the future is now. Future! Future! The 3D printer is a device that can be programmed to make 3D objects in just about every shape and form. Medical researchers have managed to build printers that can even use living cells. Now how is this? Well, tiny biological units can then be shaped into different body parts like ears and blood vessels and bones, skin and bladders. These printers may be able to save lives one day, but they can also do some pretty fun stuff. How about printing toys right out of your imagination? 3D printers have also created instruments, cameras, birdhouses, phone cases, shoe soles, and even drones. So if you could print anything, what would you print? <laughs> it's a giraffe! Hi, I'm Haley Ann with this week's Health and Nutrition News. Are your parents always telling you that you need to go to bed earlier? Ah. Now be a good boy and go to sleep. Well, they might be right. The truth is, we all need a good night's sleep, and we have an internal clock that influences everything from our health to our moods and behavior. 
The National Institute of Health has been studying our circadian rhythms for years. These rhythms respond to the light telling our body it's time to be awake or that it's dark and time to be sleepy for bedtime. Get your snack if it kills me. Do you ever get into trouble for playing with your phone or computer in bed? I've got some bad news. Your parents are right again. We can disrupt that cycle by using bright electronics at night. It basically tricks our brains into thinking it's daytime. The bottom line is your body has a built-in clock, and if you don't get your rest, you're going to be grumpy and do poorly in school. So get your rest. How many of you guys have ever heard of malaria? It's a really scary disease that causes fevers, chills, and is spread through tiny microorganisms like mosquitoes. According to top scientists, climate changes are causing the earth to heat up in places that weren't as warm as before. Countries that haven't had to worry about malaria are now in danger. Do you ever turn bright red when you get embarrassed? Well, as embarrassed as you may be when you blush, it's actually making people trust you. <laughs> See, we can hide all kinds of emotions behind fake smiles or nodding our heads, but blushing is as close to it gets to showing emotion beyond our control. You're blushing. You are blushing. What happens is blood rushes to our cheeks, giving our hearts away. According to a recent study, people actually like cheeks that are rosy because the person seems more trustworthy. So next time you're feeling ashamed of your flushed cheeks, just remember that people are more likely to trust you. Gilly, we'll talk later, little missy. Sorry. Do you love fast food? I do, I do, I do, I do, ooh. You might not after this story, if being unhealthy wasn't a good enough reason to avoid it, then reddit.com exposed that the equipment it's prepared on is usually dirty and the ingredients aren't what you think they are. That stuff will knock your socks off. This is a good pack of chicken. Oh, you're right. That's disgusting. McDonald's is really bad news. The chicken nuggets have very little chicken in them. They are breaded twice and then deep fried. And the worst food you can eat out? Hot dogs at sporting events like baseball games. Cheers. They are sometimes reheated three or four times before they are served. And while it's okay to have fast food every once in a while, be sure to eat fresh fruits and vegetables most of the time. Captain Vegetable! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabriella back with this week's entertainment news. So, are you Team Xbox or Team PlayStation? Are you one of the millions of people who game? Cool. Teenagers. If so, then you probably heard about the release of Xbox's Titanfall. While the game has been hyped as the savior of the Xbox game system, it kind of falls apart when it comes to the graphics. This was a big release in the gaming wars, and while Microsoft sold plenty of the Titanfall game, Sony's PlayStation 4 is still outselling the Xbox One by nearly 2 million consoles. So it makes you wonder, will Xbox or PlayStation win the battle? It's on the way. Stand by for Titanfall. The movie Veronica Mars premiered this past week. If you were a fan of the original TV series, then fans say this is a must-see. If you like adventures, then this film may be for you, as it features a mystery murder full of twists and turns. Veronica, this is the whole case file. How'd you get this? Veronica Mars. Look who it is! Do you love the Muppets? Yes, 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 yes. So do I. No! Well, get ready. Their latest flick, Muppets Most Wanted, releases March 21st. The film premiered on Tuesday night at the El Capitan Theater in Los Angeles. Everyone who was anyone was there, including Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, and Fozzie Bear. I wonder where Big Bird was. Fozzie! Hey, where are you guys? 
The film has been described as the funniest Muppet movie yet and is a Muppety mix of mayhem as the Muppets head overseas for a global tour, selling out grand theaters in some of Europe's most exciting destinations. To London! Madrid! Dublin! The world capital of comedy, Berlin, Germany. Ich bin ein Berliner! This film is a must-see for some great laughs. Kermit, you were like James Bond back there. Thanks, Fozzie. If you don't know who Hunter Hayes is, then you will soon. He's the 22-year-old country star who is looking to break the Guinness World Record for the most shows played in one day. Starting in New York City and ending in Philadelphia, Hayes has shows planned in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Hayes isn't doing this to be famous, by the way. He's using the extra attention to put a spotlight on child hunger with his 24-hour road race to end child hunger. Good luck, Hunter. We will be rooting for you. As we reported last week, South by Southwest, which is a mega music film and tech festival, was in full swing this week and featured several events, special guests, high-tech products, and amazing performances. Several movies premiered, including the time-traveling thriller starring Ethan Hawke, Predestination, and the comedic flick Neighbors starring Seth Rogen and Zac Efron. And you will see it! Dude, we missed the airbag! Coldplay took the stage with songs from their sixth album, Ghost Stories, along with performances from London Grammar and Imagine Dragons. Hi, I'm Gabby, with your news from around the world. Today we are heading back to Sochi, Russia, where the 2014 Winter Olympics just took place. If you thought the competition was over, think again. See, there's an incredible group of athletes who go head-to-head -head in the Paralympic Winter Games. Sit back and enjoy, and away we go. The athletes in the Paralympic Games overcome their disabilities, like amputated limbs or blindness, to become Olympic athletes. U.S. snowboarder Evan Strong made history taking gold in para snowboarding. This was the first time para snowboarding has been in the Paralympics. To be a gold medalist in the first ever Paralympic Games, I'm ecstatic, over the moon. So far, the U.S. has 16 total medals with one gold. Let's go, USA! 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 Back in the U.S., we'll head above the Arctic Circle to the most northern town, Barrow, Alaska. It's common to see igloos, Eskimos, and even a polar bear roaming across the street. <laughs> but people have to eat, right? Yeah, why? Meet the man delivering pizza in the world's coldest place. We don't deliver. We don't deliver, but you do. For deliveries, he has to wear huge boots, three pairs of specially made Eskimo socks, two pairs of pants, three hoodies, and a very big jacket. He has to keep the heater on inside the car day and night just so the glass doesn't break. The tents can go as low as 40 below. Now that's cold. And you know what else else? I think the pizza's getting cold. And the pizza's cold! Oh, the pizza's cold, not the pizza! Have you heard the saying, be sure to wear green so you don't get pinched? <laughs> well, I am seeing plenty of green as we now go to Ireland for St. Patrick's Day. Nobody's ever seen all oh, the golden gold of Ireland. Nobody's ever seen. St. Patrick's Day began around 300 years ago to celebrate the arrival of Christianity in Ireland and is now celebrated throughout the world. Celebrations include public parades, festivals, and of course wearing green attire and shamrocks. Back in the 1700s, people feared that leprechauns would go around pinching them. Leprechauns? Did you see him? That's a full-grown human being, ain't it, Mum? But by wearing green, the leprechauns couldn't see them and they wouldn't be pinched. Ow! Ow! <laughs> it's better to be safe than sorry, so I'll be sure to wear green this St. Patty's Day. I'm Chloe, back with this week's Animal News. Today, we will learn about our peculiar animal, 
or should I say insect? The giant prickly stick insect. This bizarre insect, which is found in Australia, is similar to a scorpion when it takes its stinging stance against predators. The giant prickly stick eats mostly eucalyptus leaves, oak, hawthorn, and bramble. The female prickly stick grows up to five to eight inches, while the males are much smaller, measuring in at only 11 centimeters. They might look cool and friendly enough until they release a defense odor that is horrible for their opponent. They don't bother us though, since their odor smells like toffee and peanut butter. Wow, a bug that actually doesn't disgust me. That's the first. So next time you're in the outback, sniff out the giant prickly stick insect. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Meow, it's time for crazy cat news. <laughs> We've all heard of cats having nine lives. Well, Lux, a 22-pound house cat, better start behaving if he wants to make it that long. You see, Lux went a little crazy recently, and 911 had to be called after he trapped his entire human family, even the family dog, inside of a bedroom and refused to let them out. One moment, okay? You hear him? Can you over yeah, yeah, I hear him. Hold on. This overweight feline apparently scratched their baby just because he wanted to play with the cute kitty's fluffy tail. The dad rushed over, kicked the cat in the rear, and it made Lux go berserk. <laughs> Thankfully, police came out, rescued the family, and didn't let the cat out of the bag. I hope there are no copycats out there. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey! No! It's time to bust out the party hats and streamers because the World Wide Web is turning 25. <laughs> While the internet has only been around for 25 years, it's managed to impact just about every aspect of our lives. Just think, without the web, you wouldn't be watching us right now. One year ago, the Catholic Church elected a new pope to lead the nearly 1.2 billion Catholics around the world. They went with former nightclub bouncer Jorge Mario Bergoglio. Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to rebuild his country into a global superpower. Remember to stay tuned in to what's happening by going to our website at www.clubhousenews.com. You'll find in-depth stories, videos, and much more. So until next time, stay, stay on, on top, top of the world with clubhousenews.com. Clubhouse